Hey, welcome back, everybody. And first and foremost, Happy New Year to everyone. Actually, this is when it's being played on January 4th. It's actually December 9th, and it's almost getting closer to Ho 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 Day. And because of that, do I have a gift for my audience? Oh, man. <laughs> the band is back together again. <laughs> Brian Comerford. Nick, Lo oh, God, Nick, I keep pronouncing your last name wrong. Lozano, is that correct? You got it, man. Wow. I'm, I know who I am. It's okay. After how many years we know each other, and I can still <laughs> flub your last name and Roxanne Kaufman Elliott. Welcome back, guys. Thanks, Peter. It's Thanks for having us. Here. Yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> Take Thanks. you off the rails another time around here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, it's something about that third rail I need to really stay away from, and I got a feeling it's not going to happen today. You're talking about a rail in the bar, right? Is that what you're talking about? Absolutely. The third rail in the bar? Absolutely. <laughs> With a name like Margaritas, of course. Well, now, we we already addressed this earlier in the podcast that we appeared, the live podcast for you guys. It's pronounced Margaritas. <laughs> There's something about Look. the Greeks. Those Greeks just make you sick. Hepatitis, gingivitis, laryngitis, they all just make you sick. Right, Peter. If you're entitled to flubbing Nick's last name, I'm entitled to flubbing yours, especially when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, flub away. Um, so maybe we can get this thing kicked off and, and and go down this conversation we wanted to have, uh, and see how long we can stay <laughs> in the bumper rails. Who who knows if we kind of veer off and chasing rabbits down squirrel holes or something? That that's all right as well. <laughs> but we we're going to talk about the, from a leadership perspective. And dealing with this year that everybody just wants to get away from, 2020. And there's a lot of adjectives, four-letter adjectives you can put in front of <laughs> 2020. But what experiences have we been dealing with? I mean, this has taken us really out of, out of our normality. And it's not just us, it's globally. Mm. And from a leadership perspective, as leaders, we have to be cognizant of those issues, as well as how are they affecting my people? I mean, just, just think back on March 15th, we'll just use that date. All of a sudden, everybody had to leave the office and go work from home. There's a train wreck that happened <laughs> almost immediately. Oh, and by the way, schools were closed. So now, well, in my household, I have one full-time employee, new full-time employee who's working in my old office, my wife. I have another part-time full-time employee, my 20-year-old son who's around the house all the time because of virtual, and, and I put them on warnings. I've, I've tried to fire them because they haven't been doing their jobs and no, they don't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask the three of you, what experiences have you experienced not to be redundant, redundant through, <laughs> through this year that, that, that can you, you can share with the audience because we still have a little bit more time with us, according to the, the scientists. We still have more time with us. Excuse me, I didn't mean to hit my computer over there. And I mean, how, how are you advising others when we run up against these roadblocks? And we'll, I will, I'll be a gentleman and we'll go ladies first, Roxanne. Aww. Well, thank you, Peter. And thank you again for having us. This is always great. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with, with your first, with your first uh, comment, Peter. What have I experienced? So I'm gonna go right back to the very beginning. And we were probably four or five weeks into this thing. And uh, I work from, I've worked from home for a very, very long time, but not like this. I mean, going to my clients is where I get the energy, working with them, with the people, with the groups in, in their facilities. And that was, that was not there anymore. So instead of stepping back and thinking about how I spent my time before, I just started filling the time that I was usually driving to the client, whether it was 20 minutes or an hour and a half or whatever, the, the time that mentally I was doing different things, I filled it with work. So that's more time to coach. That's more time to have meetings. And I did that with everything. And the days got longer and the time in front of a screen doing this one dimensional work got longer and longer without thinking about it, without really giving it conscious uh, appreciation. So about four to five weeks into it, I was walking downstairs and I just sat 
on the stairway and burst into tears. I was crying. And I thought, what in the world is wrong with me? It was, it was total exhaustion from doing this and not having all of those other things that we do every day that we don't even think about we're doing. We get up and we're in the office, we go down and get a cup of coffee and we say hi to some friends or colleagues that we've met. We go out, we run out, we get lunch. We do None of that was happening. And it just built up and built up and built up. And that was the moment where I sat down and said, okay, if this is happening to me, it's happening to all of us in one way or another. So how can I talk to my people about it? And that's when I started opening conversations and workshops and everything else with asking them this one question around three things. How are you doing mentally? What's going on here in your head? What's going on here in your heart? This is the emotional piece. And what's happening to your bodies? I'm going to kick it over to you guys and say, okay, where are you? We can go down each one of those as much as you want. But it's been hilarious. It's been tragic. It's been uh, heartwarming all and everything in between the stories that we've all shared. Yeah, well said, Roxanne. Thanks, Brian. You know, I resonate with everything that you just you just brought up, and uh, I think just asking a simple question like "How are you?" Oh my to God. start a conversation uh, that in itself has been, I think, a force multiplier for uh, just continuing to engage relationships, particularly when, just as you say, we don't have the interpersonal contact. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get the same. Uh, energy revitalization off of interacting with a cluster of electrons on your screen that you right. do sitting right across from someone, right? Yeah. Uh, or being able to give them a hug or a handshake, oh. things that are so traditional and in our culture that may uh, go the way of the dinosaur here pretty quickly, you know, considering yeah. uh, what we've had to live through. Well, it's a completely different energy. This, this is energy sucking. When you're in a room with people, it's energy giving because you, you have the exchange. We don't even realize it's happening, but we're, we are all fields of energy. That's all we are, is energy encased in this physical form. And that has impact, negative, positive, and neutral. And when we're this way, now we have to learn how to engage in that differently so mm -hmm. that we can create a connection with people that we feel when we can't share in the energy field. Nick, you want to take it? Yeah, sure. So for me, the beginning of this, you know, we're not going to say what it is of 2020, right? <laughs> Unless it's like Dr. Evil, right? <laughs> um, it's, it's just this whole thing. For me, it was just go, 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 right? Being in IT professionally, um, it was a matter of just turning things around so that people could even just work at home. So you know, for me and probably a lot of IT leaders in the beginning, it was probably just enabling their staff to work from home. And you were just so busy doing with that, dealing with that, that you didn't have time to stop and think about what was actually going on. Um, for me, you know, I've always kind of been uh, big on emotional intelligence. So I've always reached out to my people to see how they're doing. And one thing I've noticed through this whole thing is it's more important now than it ever was before. Um, for me, you know, I work from home, but you know, I have a wife, I have a child, so I still have some, some human interaction, some connection with other people. Um, so I don't know how people feel if they're, you know, in their early twenties, they live in an apartment by themselves and they have no connection. Um, those are the people, you know, I go more out of my way to say, Hey, how are you doing? How's life treating you? Is there anything I can do for you? Um, because one thing I've learned over time is that fear is relative to each person, right? I'm not afraid of the pandemic or what's going on or the future. I'm not doom and gloom on it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the person next to me isn't afraid or has the same views as me. It could be the complete opposite way. And some of that's just being more empathetic to other people's emotions and letting them know that, hey, you know, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be angry. Um, it's okay to have all these emotions and don't bottle them up and, you know, mm -hmm. It, you know, let feel them. They're real emotions that are there. Don't bottom them up and hold them in. Um, so I think for me, a big thing, you know, just going through this whole thing is empathy. And Brian, I would say, you know, you said the thing about we probably won't have shit handshakes or hugs again. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, you know, pretty positive guy. This isn't the first pandemic that 
human beings or humankinds have gone through. You know, there was a Spanish flu in the early 1900s, and I'm sure all those practices stopped, but people forget things very quickly and move on with their daily lives and go back to normal. And we see that in different jurisdictions now Mm -hmm. um, across the world. There's some states here in the United States, like Florida, who closed for two weeks and everything's back to normal. Um, They don't do any measures or anything like that. And there's other states like New York City where everything's locked down. Um, So it's it's all relative to where you are. Mm -hmm. I I have a friend who moved back to Australia and uh, he's not still quarantined for two weeks in a hotel, he and his daughter. Mm -hmm. And he's going, this is great. We got a suite. Uh, I, th- I think the government's paying for this. We get, you know, I, I DoorDash, they deliver food all the time. But after that two week period, they leave the hotel and they don't have to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Um, and, he's, and he's talked to some friends who have moved back to Australia or even coming to visit. And they go, when you first walk out and you're not required to wear a mask and you're looking around at people who aren't wearing masks, it's a little creepy at first. It takes a little time to begin to reestablish yourself and accept that as normal. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Thailand is the same way, right? They've only had 60 deaths in the country. They've mm-hmm. had under 3,000 uh, recorded infections. And they have managed things very tightly from travelers in and out of the country, from quarantining anyone who's coming in in exactly that way so that they can continue things as normal. And uh, so that, you know, I think kind of back to Roxanne's point uh, about, you know, what have been some of the most impactful issues in this year. For me, it, it is the compounded effect of all of these stressors. Yes. And particularly when I have seen it drive such polarization between people you know, we started off the year with an impeachment and political polarization is something that's always sort of expected. I mean, I think we've seen it really <laughs> doubled down on uh, in the last four years or so. But, uh, you know, polarization around things like health issues, I, I don't know if anyone really expected to see that coming. And it yeah. has led to some very awkward and disheartening conversations for me personally. Uh, particularly given how much work I do uh, around medical data and uh, with uh, uh, medical benefits, you know, for organizations. And, and so, you know, that kind of polarization, I think, is something where, Roxanne, you, you asked the question about the head and the heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Nick brought up, you know, the need for empathy. I would add to that, there's a sense of decency that feels like it has really gone out the window uh, with the way people have been willing to interact with each other and, and not have uh, the kind of emotional intelligence that's required for for empathy or uh, interacting with people from where they are. Empathy. I've, I've heard, you know, we hear the definition of empathy, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes, but that's really not true. Empathy is understanding what that first person's feeling in their shoes. Mm-hmm. And we don't do mm-hmm. that very well. Mm-hmm. Understand how somebody's feeling. So as you say, then you've got the polarization, then you get social injustice and everything that's been piled on into one year. It does mess with the head, the heart, <clears throat> and the body of COVID-19. The 19 stands for the minimum amount of weight you're going to gain <laughs> during this pandemic. <laughs> So true. You know, if, um, Brian, I, I, I love what you said, and that's so true. And I see it within the corporations that I work with. You know, there it, it's the same thing. It's it's how do you, and I, I feel, I really feel not sorry for, but I empathize with, um, with the leaders in organizations, with the messaging, with making it fair, with trying to be, you know, across the board with everybody about, do you come in? Do you stay home? When do you do one? When do you do it the other? You know, how do we deal with all these things going on and still maintain the organization? Um, it's it's tragic to see how many small businesses have have gone had to have just had to shut their doors mm-hmm. through all of this. So how do we cope with all of that too? When you see that, I mean, you know, within NSA, the speakers organization, Peter and I belong to that. Um, some of our some of our colleagues and dear friends have had to completely change, you know, flip their lives 
around this thing. I mean, they make a living getting in, you know, large groups of people and talking. Mm. Well, we don't do that anymore. And, it, you know, that's just one small microcosm of how this is impacting everybody. So, you know, from certainly from my perspective, it's how can we help people to be aware of what's happening, look at it very consciously and very purposefully and say, what can I be doing differently now to help myself remain whole and healthy, physically, mentally, emotionally, and those around me? There's just so many aspects to this. And Peter, you had said that um, the scientists are determining when this will go away. There for a while, I thought it was the politicians. <laughs> well, they're still trying. They are. They're Clearly. still trying to tell us. Well, yeah, they're still trying to tell us uh, how this is all going to play out. But no, you, you listen to the experts. You, you, you look, I mean, I'm, I'm not big on data. That was a little sarcasm there because you know, <laughs> data, <laughs> data, <laughs> data, I mean, you look at data. You look it's at hard data. to tell these days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> heard about this thing called gravity i'm really uncertain about it though right i, not, I don't want sure. it to hold me down <laughs> <laughs> i want to be uplifted and gravity's just not doing it for me right now and with that with that let's just take a real short break okay we were talking about gravity guys <laughs> <laughs> and it, it only took us about 20 yeah, about maybe 15 minutes to get a little bit off the rails there. That was, that was, that's a long time for us. That was, that was a really I, long time. I think that's a record. Are you going to, Peter, are you going to ask us all about MacGyvering at some point too? No, no, you're the, you're the MacGyver queen. Oh, Ser seriously, gentlemen, she is the MacGyver queen because as now she's doing all of her coaching calls at home. Now you see, I'm standing up. I got one of those desk risers. Roxanne thought it was a really cool idea. You tell the story better than I can. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I needed to get something like, like Peter has, like you guys have, I'm sure that could go up and down or at least get the monitor up to eye level. Because when I do workshop, I have to move, you know, I do mm -hmm. them just like I do in person. You guys have been there. You've all been through yep. it. So, so I do it exactly the same way. I just do it this way. So I had to get something that was eye level. I went through three different of these movable things that go up and down, mechanical, electron, all this stuff. And they're all too big and they're all too heavy and they're all too chunky. And quite frankly, they're just ugly. <laughs> I can't do, I can't do, I can't look at ugly and do what I do. So I got, I sent them all back. I was sitting here thinking one day, what do I have? What can I do to get thing to get this thing up? So this camera is, is all the way up to my almost five foot four frame. And um, I thought, wait a minute. I went downstairs into my kitchen and I started ru rub rub running, running around within the cupboards and I found a bread basket, big round bread basket about this high. And I thought, okay, well, that's pretty sturdy. And what else, what else? And then I pulled out a lobster pot and I put the lobster pot upside down on top of the bread basket. And you know what? Bam, right there. <laughs> <laughs> five foot three point two five inches it was meant to be <laughs> it was eye level right. did, <laughs> so go ahead put go ahead. some little lacy doilies or something over it so that you could have the the pretty factor oh, i think you know the basket's kind of pretty itself and i love the <laughs> lobster pot it makes me think of good clam bakes and lobster bakes so that was cool so what i've done is i incorporate that now into all my sessions so when we're talking about brain, heart, body. I'll say, well, guys, what are you doing? You know, we all had this at home thing as Peter was talking about, you're thrust into this environment. What have you been doing? You know, they all think this is a bookcase behind me. You guys know it's not, it's, it's a beaded curtain. So, so I thought, so I have this thing. So I took a picture of what I look at, what I'm seeing when I'm talking to, to my folks and I show them the, I do a slide, a short slide deck and I show them the monitor on top of the lobster pot, on top of the bread basket with all the wires and stuff behind it with the computer and the connections and everything. And they love it. And just go MacGyver stuff, go figure it out. <laughs> but, but you make a good point. If you think about it, how have you guys been creative? Because we've had downtime. Yeah. And, and, oh yeah. And, and, yeah. and, you know, there's always a silver lining in, in, in a dark cloud. And I think that silver lining is the ability to actually sit, think, 
and be creative. So what have you guys done? I think for me, you know, when I started working from home, my wife was already teleworking a few days a week. So if I had to telework, you know, I normally just had my laptop and I sat down on, you know, the dining room table. But as a pandemic went on and I noticed that things, that this was going to be a longer situation than normal. I was like, okay, I need to fix this. I need a desk because I can't sit hunched over on a laptop on my dining room table anymore. So I'm, I'm in my guest room right now, st- slash studio, I guess um, you'd call it. And my wife's like, you got the little corner over here where I'm sitting right now. So I'm looking around, trying to find a desk that fits perfectly. I can't find anything I want. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to build it. I'm tired of this. Um, so I went and I bought a live slab edge of walnut, cut it, you know, put legs on it and everything and made a, you know, uh, an end table, a uh, coffee table for my wife, put that downstairs. So <laughs> now I've got to a point where I've built my own shelves. I've got floating shelves made out of cedar up here. I've nice. got my own lights. I've got my mic up here on a boom arm. Um, so I've made myself uh, a little studio and it's kind of been a creative outlet too to be able to work with my hands and get away from a computer screen, yeah. right? So like when I do that stuff, like I don't listen to anything. It's just downtime to to work with my hands and think um, from a cognitive level mm-hmm. and not have anything else going on, just kind of being in the moment. Yeah, Ronan cool. janitor woodworker. <laughs> yeah, you got that too. <laughs> what about you, you know, I'm starting to get, uh, people on LinkedIn are starting to call me Ronan. It's, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> that is so cool. That is cool. Yeah. And then working with your hands. I mean, I work with my hands. I can screw up a bottle of Maker's Mark. That's about the extent of my, <laughs> of my work, but just sharing. How about you, Brian? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I make music and uh, I write poetry and I take photographs and manipulate them using computer technology. And so, uh, so I wrote a book. Uh, it's, you know, I've, I've written a few books of poetry and, and I wrote a new book of poetry and with it, uh, every, every poem comes with an image. So, uh, so that was one of my projects that kind of like what Nick was saying, uh, even though, you know, a lot of that time was still spent in, in front of a screen, you know, I can, I can print out the paper, I can do all the edits, uh, you know, in a tactile way. So mm-hmm. that kind of helped, helped me break from some screen time, but it's also a different part of your brain that's working exactly. when you're working with something creative or artistic. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so, you know, for me, that has been just a terrific outlet to be able to you know, go in a different direction, just like, you know, changing gears from kind of where, <laughs> where you're thinking from a working perspective as you're working from home, you've got all the additional uh, noise and distractions from uh, whether it's, you know, politics, uh, social injustice, <laughs> pandemic, you know, all of those <laughs> things, you, you've got whatever's going on in your household, which may include like me being a part-time tutor for your uh, yeah. school from home child. And, uh, and so, you know, just having, I think Nick said it really well, having something that gives you that creative reset, uh, for your mental framing. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's been really critical. It's, it's as important as physical exercise. I think. I agree. Totally agree. I think it goes back to your point, Roxanne, you know, we're, we're linear, 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 linear. We get the other side over here. We need to tap into Mm-hmm. And, and and all honesty, that's why I have that guitar there. I don't play. <laughs> I, 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 I want to play. I really want to learn how to play the guitar, but I don't play. But sometimes when I'm trying to get out of my analytical accountant brain over to the to the other side, I just pick that thing up and just start strumming it. And just the sound coming off that guitar kind of frees that up. And so it's like a toll gate. They go, okay, you can go in there and play for a while. Mm-hmm. Um to help me kind of get that, get those creative juices going. You know, if you added a Pete Townsend windmill, it would give you some cardio too. <laughs> so are you saying on that? Here go the arrows. <laughs> he's, he's talking about the COVID-19. I know. I said minimum, by the way. <laughs> Macy's called and asked me if I'd be in the parade. <laughs> what about you peter what's uh uh, beyond just strumming the guitar have you had projects that you've actually 
involved yourself in so that you could kind of break away from all the noise? Uh, yes. One, I, I redesigned my whole business plan. Uh, I, I've done that. I always try to experiment with the podcast. And actually, I am starting my, my next book. Uh, but I decided to do it a little bit differently. Uh, so my podcast is now, it was for the first 100, where it was one a week interviewing people. Then I went to every other week to give them a break. Now I'm back to every, every, every week. But my two out of the four are just me doing a solo cast, as I call them. Me talking about, and I went, you know what? This is how I'm going to write my next book. I'm going to solo cast it. And, and I've actually, the first, I think next week is when I uh, uh, pitched the idea of writing the book through my podcast. So now I'm asking my audience, there's two titles I'm working with. Which one do you like? And by the way, if you want to be in the book, send me some stories around the conversations that we're having. And I'm really interested to see if anybody, one, listens, two, <laughs> <laughs> actually will submit some ideas for the next book. That's a great idea, Peter. And I, I'm going to tell you something. So a good friend of mine who I met on LinkedIn, Troy Ritchie, um, he micro podcast every single day. He's been doing it for wow. like a year and a half, but they're, they're like one, two minutes. Um, and he actually lost his job because of the pandemic. Um, you know, just, it was a school software business and basically everything, you know, got shut down because there was no demand for it. But I actually got it this week. That is literally what he did. He oh wrote gosh. this book right here, unemployed, just based off his podcast. Um, you know, and it's just him. Most of the time, he talks about a topic for two or three minutes, and he took all his thoughts and ideas and just put it down in this book um, and produced this all himself. This hardcover book, um, it's really nice. But that's that's a great idea. This is called um, "You Got It Now, Go Get It" by Troy Ritchie. It's looking forward to reading that one. But it's 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 a great idea. It's it's been interesting to me that you know, through this pandemic that some people have gone through so much adversity, but then some people have shined through it. Mm. Right. And, and Troy's a great example. You know, he lost his job, but then he took it another route. He's like, you know what? I have free time. I can write this book. I can work on my own brand. I can make myself better because of this. Um, so at the same time, you know, it, it's brought in people closer together. Um, so it's very interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. And, and thank you for the advertisement for Troy. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, I, it, it, it was just really odd that you said that. I just, you know, you don't have to put that in there. No, uh, no I'm just giving you a hard time, man. It's, it's I, sitting I right here. Out of me. It's, it's uh, <laughs> sitting right there next to me, and it's my next book to read. He, he just sent it to me. So um, when you okay. said that, I was like, oh, that's exactly what he's doing, what he did. So, yeah. so I just noticed that now, now two out of the four of us are Zen archers, Peter and Brian. <laughs> The arrows are slinging. I, 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 I've had a good, I've had a good teacher. <laughs> yes, you did. You certainly have. You certainly have. So, Roxanne, what have you done other than rebuild a a, a, a standing desk? What, what, what have you done? <laughs> creative? My creative side. Yeah. Oh gosh, uh, that's um, well. Uh, I'm taking. Uh, a, a class I you know it, it what's been interesting for me quite frankly guys is uh, I think just by the nature of the work that I do and, and the business model that's evolved over the years this has been I think probably the busiest year that I've had since I started my business 2005 uh, it has been non-stop since since the beginning of the year, not just not just when uh, all this started with with the pandemic, but that just that made it even more intense. So um, you know, I I'd even so I haven't been doing much creatively, which is a problem, and I realize that I, I am a I, I am a great journaler though. I journal a lot. I probably have twenty five journals sitting over there. Some of them are full, some of them are half full. It's just depending upon where I am in my head at the time. And there's there's books in there too, guys. There's there's books in there. I don't quite know how to make that happen, but yeah. Uh, one of the great things, and, and Brian and Nick, we talked about this from from our first podcast when you invited me to join you, uh, was doing voiceovers, and that mm -hmm. was going to be big on my on my calendar this year to start doing that and to do audios of my book. And I'm writing another book and developing a product to launch next year, and that's going to require video and audio. 
but I've been so busy. I seriously have not even been able to make the time to do it. So it's, mm. so where do you go from here? Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, who's the voiceover <laughs> on the podcast, my podcast? Oh, that's right. I <laughs> am <laughs> Peter's voiceover. <laughs> and, and who did my commercial? Cause you wanted to get some Reno. So me too. <laughs> So I have done it. Awesome. I have part of that goal accomplished because of you guys <laughs> told me to do that. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. That's great. And you're right. <laughs> well, see, it takes a village. It does. Oh my God, does it ever? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. You know, I I think it's interesting that both, uh, you know, what Nick and and Roxanne both just said for many people that I've interacted with, I've actually heard them say something similar where. This has been the busiest year of my life. This has been the most lucrative year of my life. This has been the most creative year of my life, the most productive year of my life. Yep. So there has certainly been a faction of, of people who have taken it as uh, you know an opportunity to be transformational in some way from whatever path they had been on previously, or just adding to you know some of the things that uh, were on their bucket list and you know the the forced cloistering uh, is is one of those factors that help them actually have the initiative to to get things done. You know, Brian, that's so true, and it was it's been so interesting because um, one of the things that happened was you know when when well we're all designing our studios and where we work and and all of that, and as professional speakers for Peter too, uh, there's certain certifications we get as, as virtual presenters and all these things. So, so I'm talking about this to some of my, my clients that I've had for a long time. And this is, this is opportunity. So a couple of them have said, well, Rox, you know, could you come in and like teach us how to do that? So I put together these short little series of live sessions that I do with them and I, I have the slide decks, so it, you know, you know, I'm not very technical or, or <laughs> very savvy there, but you put it all together and you show people, look, this you've got to get yourself into this. You've got to get your personality. That's how you 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 engage with people, and you start talking about presenting, meeting, and engaging virtually in those three areas that we started out with, Peter, when we started our talk today. How are you engaging them mentally, emotionally, and physically to keep them here? with you while we're talking. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's so it's all kinds of opportunities and things spin off other things if you've got your head opened up to it. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a client call me and said, could you work with uh, my three regional salespeople? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're not, they need to do virtual presentations better. They do these lunch and learns for, uh, they're in the construction business, so for architects. And I said, absolutely, love to do that. So it was like three, got three people, two hours each. And the first person did, I mean, it's, it's always tough being first. And after his presentation was about 50 minutes, I started asking him questions like, so what monitor were you looking at? Why? And you were walking through your own in, in the virtual background that you had. He goes, you were watching me? <laughs> I, I said, yeah, because I thought everybody was watching the slides. I went, why would I want to watch the slides? You sell the product. <laughs> Just because everybody else out there, that's how they're doing their presentations, these PowerPoint mind numbing presentations. It's you that sell. Right. And we and worked with, well, he took the brunt of the hit. Then the second person had, you talk about Zen, you know, my bad internet connection on your live podcast. She was really having <laughs> a hard time. Um, and, but but learn, but learn from that and learn about backgrounds and how to engage. And then the last person, so he'd set through two of these. And at one point I asked the CEO to ask him a question that uh, to answer a question completely wrong, just literally wrong. I wanted to see how he reacted. And when he did, it, he went, <laughs> does anybody else have a question? <laughs> and, and, and I went, you know, and, and I said, so you have to be prepared for those, but you cannot just diss them. You have to acknowledge that's not quite the right answer. Right. It's somebody out there have it. And it was such an eye opening thing, but it's something that we kind of all take for granted, but we forget other people as we started out were thrown into this. They have 
they have how many how many noses have you looked up this past year on a on oh my a, gosh how many people have put their that's phone... those horrible dell dell laptops where it's the up nose camera shot yeah, yeah i know exactly what you're talking about or yeah. they're in a car taking the taking a zoom call with a video on and the phone is in their lap and all you see is <laughs> all you, all you see is, yeah <laughs> yeah so i will tell you one thing i think like and we're talking about these virtual presentations and it, and I always bring this up is that everyone who's doing virtual presentations should probably look at what the video game industry is doing and live streamers are doing on Twitch because they are doing custom overlays and different things to interact with their audience. They're giving that virtual experience already. They're kind of ahead of the game. Um, and it's not necessarily that, you know, that the video game people are doing things that business people need to do. 100%, but look at the ways they engage with their audience, the way they build the layouts for their videos to get people engaged and watch because they will have people watching them for three and four hours wow. and interacting with them back and forth. So if you check out something like Twitch, the just chatting section or the talk shows and podcast, you can see how people are building real time live audience interactions with um, you know people virtually um it's not that you need to mimic everything exactly but you could pick up one or two things of how they do it maybe how they lay it across their screen where they put their camera um, learning about some of these other tools to kind of up your game and be ahead of the curve of the rest of the speaking and um, business professionals you'll be mm -hmm. miles ahead of everybody if you start looking at that stuff now that's just my my two cents on that <laughs> thank you very much for that i've heard of twitch i have a twitch every now and then but this is more than just that <laughs> Is that from the arrows? That, uh, yeah, because I got they keep flying after me. Uh, but I have a question for you guys, um, and I don't. I'm looking for this the software. Do you happen to watch Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> just, just, just tell me what you're talking. What, what, he's, what he's you're got, thinking here? He's he's got an iPad on on his desk, and. He's got either little quotes or something, but he plays this, you know, the sound bite, the small sound bite. When something, uh, somebody says something, he thinks it'd uh, be a nice add on to it, a little bit of an interactive tool. And I've seen, sort of seen, he's got these little buttons on his iPad and he's hitting, like, you know, Zen Archery, Zen Archery, <laughs> Zen Archery, something like that. And I can't figure out what that I'll is. tell you exactly what that is, Peter. Oh, that is a stream deck. Um, that Steam is from deck. the gaming, that is from the gaming world. So if you check out Twitch, that is how people, um, so there's this tool called open broadcasting studio or software. I can't remember that, but, but they call it OBS free. Yeah. doesn't cost anything and you can use it as a virtual camera. And what people do is they get specific apps and they can set up push buttons to do different things. Like maybe a gift flies across the screen or the sound of an arrow goes by when he clicks that it's kind of taking that broadcast studio quality and giving it you the power on your desktop. And wow. the, like I said, what you just brought up there, those that's things that video gamers have been doing for years. Um, and that's why I kind of recommended your listeners to go that way and at least just explore and see what people are doing um, in that world. Because, the, you know, the video gamers are always, you know, four or five years ahead of the wave that's going to come mm -hmm. and 30 mm -hmm. years younger. Not necessarily. You'll be surprised. Um, there, there are older gamers there, um, or there's people who just talk on Twitch and get thousands of people who watch them. It's wow. It's it's just a different world. Different things are going on, and it, it's ahead of the curve, in my opinion. Okay. Like if you want to see where anything is going with live streaming, that's where you want to look. Do you notice when he said old, he looked directly at me? Did he you did. See that, Brian? I did notice that. I'm looking at a I camera, did. which is right no, here. No, no, you... <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my stream deck out, and I'm just gonna put a gift going across the screen. But, <laughs> but that's what you're looking at. Um, it's uh, Elgato Stream Deck, I think. Um, wow. there, there's a bunch of companies that make them, so just look them up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. They're so Thank cool. You. So, anybody else want to chime in? I mean, we've got about maybe five seven more minutes left anybody want to uh, add on anything well we haven't talked a lot about the body part right we, right. we've yeah. talked about the head the heart we've talked about uh you know some of some of the ways that we've tried to break uh you know some of the patterns that have forced the disruption on us 
Um, I, I can tell you from a body perspective, uh, like you, Peter, I've, I've kind of, you know, had this <laughs> cyclical, uh, d- depending on what my schedule has been like, uh, I've either been really good. Uh, I had a juice fast, uh, did that for 15 days. That was oh, I remember awesome. That. Yeah. Uh, I learned how to Zumba and have been watching Ooh. streaming videos of Zumba classes. So that's, that's been good cardio. I've, I've taken up doing yoga and have, you know, now select few online uh, yoga instructors. I like to follow their routines, but it's also, uh, you know, it's one of those things that like having, having a kid, you know, doing remote schooling, it's hard because you end up being the de facto tutor whenever there's a question that comes up. So, so for me, it's been a challenge trying to maintain a schedule uh, right. around kind of all these other things that have been evolving. So, so from a physical perspective, I'm kind of curious what each of you have been. I think my experience has been very much like yours, Brian, although I don't have kids in the house anymore. Um, it's just keeping, keeping a routine and doing it consistently because, because when everything blows up every day, you know, I, I, I know this is true for a lot of folks. When you, when you leave, finally leave your, your bedroom, bathroom, closet, den, attic, garage, bathroom, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever space you're working from, when you finally walk out at the end of the day and you look at the clock and you've been doing this yeah. 12 to 14 hours and you really haven't moved more than five or 10 minutes in that time to get yeah. up and actually move around except for the necessary things, uh, that, that gets bad that starts to have an impact. And I'm guilty of that. I, I, that's happened. So I've tried really, really hard to stay consistent with walking and stretching. And um, I do my own kind of modified yoga stuff. Uh, but it's, it's and, and walking outside. And now that it's cold in Ohio, it's a problem. Because mm-hmm. it's, it takes, it, it's just, it's, it's stressful to get it all together to go do it. And then it's not, it's just a whole different thing. So yeah, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to stay consistent with anything. You, Nick. Yeah, for me, you know, I, I have a whole gym in my garage. I had, you know, 300 pounds of weights and a squat rack, pull up bar, everything before this whole thing started. So I was good from that perspective. Uh, I think for me, it was a switch in my routine. I was always a wake up early in the morning, five in the morning, get a workout in because, you know, you've got a kid to take care of. You got to get ready to go to work. You got to travel, get all that. And what I found is when I did it in the morning, I got it done. I was just sitting for longer periods of time because the workout was done. I didn't have anything to do. So what I actually have done over time is I switched my workouts to the middle of the day to force myself to have to get up and move. Um, So I have done that and that has worked pretty well for me. I still do miss working out early in the morning. So maybe I'll switch where I do weights in the afternoon and run in the morning or run in the afternoon, do weights in the morning or something like that. But I've tried to mix in some type of physical exercise in the middle of my day. And I actually schedule that on my calendar so that people can't invade my time and uh, block off time on me on my time to work out where that's just time, you know, for me to get some type of physical activity in. You get an Apple watch. It tells you when to stand. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Garmin. It tells me it's, it says move. <laughs> it's like move. You lazy Actually, bum. <laughs> Peter, how many, how many bottles of maker's mark does it take to open to break a sweat? <laughs> God. <laughs> Well, at least one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, that's champagne. There's something back there. Absolutely. Uh, It it, it takes a lot, actually. I've I've built up the the, my my guns just to open bottles of Maker's Mark because you got to get take it's a whack. That thing is all wax in there. So you get a little extra pull. So I've got weights in here. I I lift weights just so I get this that top right off of it. Did I just do a, 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 a Kramer? Yes, you did. I think you did, yes. <laughs> yeah, you did. Wow. wow. Uh, thank you for asking, Brian. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> I'm here to help. Okay, yeah, let me, let me take that, that arrow out. No. <laughs> Actually, I love to bike. And in the summer, I was, I, 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 I think I got up to about 25 miles uh, one day, and I put in a uh, hundred and some odd miles in for the week. But as Roxanne said, I live. In, she lives in 
way up and where the snow, a lot of snow coat in Cleveland. I'm in the balmy Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> the balmy. <laughs> and it, balmy. And it's, it's, it's a whopping 45 degrees right now and it's warm, but I brought my bike inside. However, this weekend, it's supposed to be warm here. I'm going to take off its trainer and I'm just going to ride like a crazy man. But I have to get up in the morning and do it early, Nick. I, if, yeah. if, I, if I don't do it then, I, ha I have all great intentions of doing it at lunch. I'm just rolling right into work. I just yeah. tuck and roll, tuck and roll, tuck and roll, put the fires out. I, I get it. Because when I, when I used to do a lot of triathlons, um, a lot of it's like block structured training. You got to get it done. So the way I would always trick myself is like, it's okay. We're just going to do this for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Put your shoes on. If you don't feel like doing it, we're going to do this for 15 minutes and then we'll stop. Um, and then normally once I hit a groove after 15 minutes, I don't want to stop because I'm already moving. Um, so that's something I've always done with myself to force myself to move. <laughs> I can there we go. We're three, totally up the bottles. Take these three off in less than 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, we're going to start a timer. Get the timer going, Brian. Except, <laughs> except these are limited edition bottles. So I won't open these, but I might say if I'm really thirsty, 15. <laughs> and, and before, so you can use those as weights too? Is that what you can like? Absolutely. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I can do curls with them. I mean, you're just missing like the beer hat, you know, or like you just got the beer hat in, and you just that's it. Yeah, exactly. Do they have Do they have bourbon hats? There you go. That would just be silly. What? <laughs> Think how drunk you could get with a bourbon hat. <laughs> wow, man, it's, it's 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 like a filter. It's like a funnel coming in. I mean, well, if it had a natural, you know, if it had a pacing mechanism in it. You know, you might be able to wear that all week long. Oh, like oh, the regulators, those like, things. like a regulator yeah. they put on the bottle. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's brilliant. Let's get started on that. Oh yeah. There goes my liver for 2021. <laughs> 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 Guys, it's been an absolute blast. How can people find the three of you? Ladies first. Oh, geez. Uh, best way to reach me is, uh, really through through email that's best um and the email is r kaufman k-a-u-f as in frank m-a-n at pro laureate pro laureate is p-r-o-l-a-u-r-e-a-t-e that's the best way uh send me a note and i'd be glad to i'll get back to you as quickly as i can brian for me it's linkedin linkedin l -I -N -E -D -I -N. wow we've changed that. <laughs> linkedin <laughs> and your last name is spelled c-o-m-e-r-f-o-r-d f is in frank f is in frank f is in frank f is in, frank. F is in kaufman f is in kaufman <laughs> well a lot of time i get I, a lot of time i get oh it's cosman k-a-u-s no it's f f one f two f one f two f so we all have name issues <laughs> I, I, I thought you said the k was silent it's offman offman <laughs> yeah. and nick you can find me on uh, on LinkedIn, just Nick Lozano, LinkedIn forward slash I N, you know, forward slash Nick N I C K dash L O Z A N O. Perfect. Thank you, yep. guys. Always great to see you. Um, we have to figure out once we all get vaccinated and we can mingle and mangle again, we need to at least find a time to be live in person, yeah. the four of us. Absolutely. And see, how long, and see how long it takes for the security people to show up. And throw us out. I say we just, we just, uh, can we just rent a theater and charge people to watch us talk? Let's I do mean. it. Oh, that's a great idea, oh, yeah. Nick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd love that. I'll I come to, to Ohio if we do that. Okay. All right. I, Me I, too. We could do that now, currently, because we have a, a, a colleague at our uh, Ohio chapter of NSA who works in a theater and they can hold socially distanced 30 people in their theater. Yeah, oh, let's seats, do it. it. It seats 200. We're actually thinking about doing a speaker showcase there in March. Oh, cool. We just talked to him yesterday about it. It's a great theater. He's the tech guy. Uh, so, yes, we could actually do that. And they're looking for ways to use that theater differently if we could get you guys here. It would, that would be a riot. Just conversations with and give us a give us a name, give us a brand. Hey, that's you know? I, I run a whole live stream called Conversations with Interesting People that oh. has no agenda. And I never... I never plan any of it. 
Um, that's Let's actually what it. I was doing this morning. So I say we just do that and we'll stream it. Like Let's we, do we will it. do it. We will do it in person and people can come watch us and we will also stream it as well too. Oh, we'll be live on LinkedIn and Twitch at the same time and YouTube. We'll, 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 take, it off. we'll take questions as well too. And Brian will DJ the intro. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we'll kick it off with hugs and finish with Maker's Mark. That's my request. Oh my God. <laughs> or we just yeah. start it with Maker's Mark and make it interesting. <laughs> and keep the hugs coming. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We'll call it the, the Zen conversation. <laughs> conversation Zen. Well, guys, thank you all very much. Have a very yeah. happy holiday season. Be safe, be happy, yeah. and best best to your families. And looking forward to seeing you guys getting together on, on the other side of 2020. Yeah, really. Thanks so much, Peter. Oh, great to see you. Yeah, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Happy holidays, everybody. You too, Nick, Brian. Great to see you guys. Take good care. And we're going to do this thing. I'm excited. Yeah, no, to do I'm ready to do it. All right. Someone, I will drive to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Done. And you're in DC, right? I'm in DC. I'm not very far. Maybe yeah. like less than 10 hours. So, yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> Stop recording.